What is going on, everybody? This is Raw Star of the Burbank Misfits. And of course, you're listening to The Misfit Effect. And as always, I'm joined with the greatest co host that one can ask for. CW. Hey, uh, that's me. <laughs> and today, we were supposed to have a guest, but uh, things, ha- things occur, things happen. But we're going to talk about, you know, everything under the sun. What's going on in the world today? Oh, you know, yeah. Fuck. You might hear me tear up. You might hear me cry a little bit. It was it's crazy. We were talking about it before. Yeah. And it's just like, fuck, it's sad. It's like, a, you know, and it's just like, I was, you know, Rockstar, I was telling people that, like, this time, just like the election, the Trump election, like the last election, it's really showing a lot of people's lizard spaces. Like, you know, people are like, what do you mean? I'm like, have you ever seen that show V from the 80s where the aliens were secretly lizards? That's what people are showing you. Like, oh, I love black dicks. Actually, I hate black people. It's really it's really intriguing to me because, like, it's like the main people who you thought, you know, were somewhat allies to you, whatever, or you've known for, like, decades, whatever, and like you might have like you know you don't always agree on everything, but some of their viewpoints are coming out really crazy. And don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I'm listen, I, I listen to every case when it comes to the uh, you know police brutality and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I don't take everything on face value until I see or know everything. No, nah, because yeah. I see some things. They're like they killed that man. I'm like, they had a gun. Yeah, he's trying to pop down. Cause like uh, it was it was, accomplished. it was one that uh, I seen posted yesterday that uh, someone posted a video of the suspect um, resisting arrest. He was resisting arrest, and then he ran around the car, jumped in his car, and then started shooting at the police. And people were cheering, oh. people were cheering him on right now. I'm like, wait, what? And I'm like, if you, if, you, if you if you watch the entire video. They did a full sobriety test. Oh, he was in a row. Yeah, and he was drunk. And then, like, uh, he fell in the street. Like, they tased him. And he fell in the street, and they pulled him out the street, whatever, and they set the taser. They were trying to handcuff him, and then he started swinging at him. And I'm like, wait a second. Wait, now, did he start shooting at him? Yeah, he, he like, he, uh, he broke, like, they were trying to handcuff him. Uh-huh. He said he said turn around and uh, we're uh, hit, like whatever. Uh, we believe you're too drunk to drive, mm-hmm. which is whatever. And then when he was getting handcuffed, he you know turned and they fell to the ground, and they kept saying stop resisting, whatever. And then he jumped up, ran around the car, jumped into his past his driver's seat window, grabbed the gun and started shooting. Oh, they light his ass up. But then he he got away. They didn't, they didn't shoot him. He got away. Oh and shit! I'm, okay, well, I mean, like, but I understand times defending yourself like that. But if a motherfucker's running away, meaning I don't want no smoke, you don't just pop that motherfucker in his back and let so, you trying to kill him, which is what you're doing. So it's like I, I, I always look at every in the one from Indianapolis. He shot back. He was shooting at them. So. Oh, I think I know the one you're talking about. The young cat that was in the Marines. Yeah. Which have you seen that? You have you seen a, a Dave Chappelle special? No. Oh yeah, he talks about that. He's like, if you think about all these, and this gets a little weird, but he talks about. He's like, if you think about these guys, he's talking about Chris Dorner, and then he talks about the guy. Not too long after that, in like Mississippi or somewhere, the, the one light skinned black dude that killed a few, few police officers. He was like, It's interesting that people, black people from our military, went out and killed police officers. And he said, like, I was like, Wow, Dave. He was like, Because they understood that they were fighting a war on terror. And I'm like, well, shit, Dave. But, I mean, I guess if your mind can be warped like that and you can see things like that, like, well, shit. 
I mean, I, I mean, if you think about it, if we go into another country as the U.S., we don't recognize other people's authority, especially if it's wrong. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you have soldiers coming back and they're like, this authority is wrong. I'm going to fight against it. But I was just like, I don't know about that saying that, Dave. But um, yeah, I mean, but I guess those are the only people who have been in a war zone or possibly are going or been in a war zone probably aren't thinking about like, oh, I'm worried about the police shooting at me. There's a motherfucker shooting at me with an AK-47 for an entire year. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, but I don't know. What do you feel like? I feel like there's a lot of misinformation with a lot of, we know new information they're pushing out there, but I feel like there's a lot of misinformation to confuse people. And I feel like because like Facebook is a double edged, social media is a double edged sword because people can either find contradictory information, like the right information, or they can get into an echo chamber just showing the shit they believe in. Exactly. And I just feel that a lot of stuff out there needs to be, you know, it's so much, and I hate to use the term fake news, but so much fake information out there uh, that we need to make sure that we are sure about before we put it out there as truth. Yeah, sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you gotta double check that meme, bro. And there's one, there's one thing that ki- kills me is that people, people like uh, who are black, who are, you know, making the situations worse. And like, it's like the information that they are spewing is not the best information to put out there. I mean, I guess we're in America and stuff, but, and it's not the same. I mean, it's a fucked up situation happened, but it's not the same. Um, even, even the Nazis had some Jewish collaborators. You know, people that don't identify even though they're identified as. I understand. Yeah, like, I mean, we, we know a few people that don't end up identify with being black, but they're identified as black. Yeah. Everybody know you as black, yeah. And it's, it's just, it just brought, right on my brain. And the thing is, like, don't, don't get me wrong. I, like, I've had a few conversations about, um, what's going on in the world because it's, it's still going on like the riots and stuff like that the thing is is always i keep telling everybody for myself i have no issue with the protests i have no issues with the riotings but i do have an issue with the lootings yeah i now, do have I, an issue with i feel looting. that people don't understand the difference between a, um, a riot and looting and i believe that a lot of people is on camera too a lot of people who are looting aren't the people who are with the party you know, no. and and it's like because right now it's like it, it's easier to say, oh, they are with them or whatever. Let's blame them for the looting, or let's blame them for this and or that, even though they're not even a part of it. And, right. So, you know, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Yeah, and, and, and then there's, there's many videos of people who are, you know, rape. Like I'm gonna say, race baiting, race baiting right now. Um, going around doing stuff and um, making it seem like they're doing it. Like people are running around spray painting BLM on a lot of stuff, and like they just get in the car, jump out, do it, and then they leave, and they're not yeah. even whatever. And then it's I've like, mostly seen non-black people do that. Yeah, I didn't want to say that term. That's why I was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, nah, yeah, it's true. And because the thing is, is I would say, I would say that I saw mostly non POC people, but no, I've seen just non black people. So I've seen POC people spray painting walls and stuff. And I'm like, you don't get it. I know. Are you, are you aligned with this idea? Cause it's popular. Do you actually have black friends? Do you say nigga all the time? Probably. So why are you going like, and then, like, I see random things like Black Lives Matter sprayed on some graveyards. 
We don't fuck with the graveyards. We don't. We don't fuck with cemeteries, especially at no night. <laughs> I, 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 I guess I just but I just I had a flash. I just had a like side note on this. This is this is a complete side note, and I gotta say this because of what yesterday was. So, the only time I've ever been in a cemetery at night was we were meeting up with uh, a friend of like I'm gonna say a friend of mine for the internet, but a friend of mine who uh pat who who, who passed away four years ago yesterday and uh, we met in the cemetery because they were introducing me to masonry. Okay. So, you know what I'm talking about then by saying that, right? Yeah, you talking? are you talking about Easton? Yeah, so... Wow, it's, it's crazy. It's been four years. He was a cool dude. Dallas Easton. What a name. <laughs> what a guy. If you know his full name, it's even worse. But, uh, I'll tell you that later, though. But, okay. uh, but yeah, so it's like it's certain things that we just don't do. Like we don't we, <laughs> like we, we we wouldn't go to the cemetery. We wouldn't break the cemetery uh the uh the uh, tombstones. Oh yeah, we're not fucking with tombstones. We know enough to shit. You know how much is how motherfuckers put money together just to get a fucking plaque? <laughs> so like no, that's that's not what we would do, whatever, you know. And it's like Someone had post like posted one that says that said we uh we the we the colored. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. Uh who the fuck is we none of us call ourselves colored. Now and I got into I got into a discussion with somebody and I'm like, okay, my god. And like I don't know if they got it or not because they said, Well, I've heard I've heard Al Sharpton in uh uh, what's that dude name? Um, only only people over sixty say color. Well, no, no, no. And I refer, I refer upon. I said, well, and then because he because he said when he was uh when they're referring to stuff with the NAACP, I'm like, yes, the NAACP was from the nineteen nineteen thirties with I, back then, whatever. And multiracial. I said, and I said, yes, the C of uh, NAACP is colored. Yes, that's the word for that. But no one's no no. Black person is out there right now saying, "Yes, I am a colored man. Yes, I am colored." What people don't understand, also, that like one of my clients posted, also, "You they have a blah 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 this for Latinos, the NAACP for Black people," and I was like, you know, I told her, "Hey, you know, maybe I didn't say maybe you're just ignorant. I was just like, I wasn't. I didn't. Wow, I just didn't know that you felt this way." but I can educate you. So, but it was just like, um, even in NAACP, it is a black organization because it came a black organization, but it was a colored people, meaning all colored people yeah. organization initially. And that's what people don't understand. It was a national, it was an advance of all colored people. Yeah, and then like the person who even started it, I guess he was black, but he didn't look he didn't look that black at all. And I, his name is slipping my mind right now. Um, but like the man who started, like one of the people who started it, he looked he looked like he was white, and that's why he got a, a lot of a lot of help from a lot of people because of his skin collection. And his name which is my mind right which now. Which is crazy. And which like is crazy when you think about it. Like, we'll help you we'll help you Negroes. But send the Negro that doesn't look like a Negro. Exactly. So <laughs> it's just like you know, people just don't understand and they don't get it. They don't. They, well, they don't want to get it. You know. No, they don't want to get it because it'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. It'll totally fuck you up. Because they just they just think, okay, well, slavery ended. You're good. And I'm like, yeah. no. I mean, like, I said, no. yes. Okay, okay, okay. Physical, like, uh, the la- the last slave was released December eighth, eighteen sixty five. Okay, that's fact. Okay. Mm. Uh, mm. The last you're slave. Not, actually, I don't even think you're right on that. Well, no, no, no. The last slave. The last. Free- the last slave was freed. Are you talking about American slavery? Are you talking American- about U.S. slavery? U.S. slavery. The last slave was was so- set free. December eighth, eighteen sixty five. That's when it became officially illegal, uh-huh. legal in all states to have a physical slave. Let me, let me, let me. 
let me blow your mind with some shit right now. Don't get me wrong. There were there were there were more slaves out there that were still enslaved. Oh yeah, of course. But it, it became but illegal. Did you illegal. know? And this is this is how fucked up our country is. Did you know that? Like, so I was watching um, oh, what's his name? Henry Louis Gates, I think, or is it Thoreau? Okay. Uh, the guy that does the uh, like you know Black America and stuff. And okay. so he goes, he goes Don Cheadle. And actually, the crazy thing about Don Cheadle in his life is that in his ancestry, ancestry is that he's his ancestry goes back to like further east than you would no- normally see from for, further east in Africa than you would normally see as somebody as a like part of the transatlantic slave trade or whatever, right? So, but turns out his family wasn't even owned by white people. They're owned by Native Americans who didn't have to give up slavery when the U.S. decided, but decided voluntarily to. Okay. So it's just a trip when I think about this United States, how you can, how this, how our country warps people to, to step outside of themselves and the things that they wouldn't normally do to other people just because that's how America rolls. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, from what I understand, Native American slavery, just like African slavery, was more of war, war profiteering. Like, if your tribe lost, you might be a slave for a few years, but you could, you might end up becoming a part of the tribe or be able to find, get your way out of slavery within like four or five years, which, mm-hmm. I mean, after war, I understand that. But then, like, just having – it's just, just just watching how we're molded, like, molded and manipulated is disheartening because it's like, wow, you want us to deny us the same rights as you, but you want us to act just like you. Exactly. So it is – we get, uh, I don't know. I've just been reading a lot of stuff that's just been bothering me. It's bother. Yeah. It's bothersome because, like, and then you see people with like friends, and you're like, "Are you aware of what you're posting or what you're saying in response to what's going on right now?" Like, yeah, there's there's one person in particular that's really pissing me off that I definitely can't say their name on on this thing yeah. right now, but. Yeah, because it's like, you, you know, you watch people and you're like, wow, you just, I mean, I actually understand right now people bringing up other disenfranchised people's plights during this moment. So somebody can like, okay, people are being tuned in to like what bad things that are happening to people. Maybe I can get somebody that's paying attention to this happening in America to something else that's happening also in America or in the world. That's fine. But then you, but it's the people that want to post the, hey, let me post about these cops who are killed. Or let me post about this thing with the cops or this thing about this or this white person that was killed by, by black people. Or, mm-hmm. And I'm just like, mm, you, do you know what you're doing? Or like some people, I'm, I know they're posting to be like, well, the police kill white people all the time or fuck them up too. And then they're surprised when people are like, yeah, we need to bring this shit down so it don't happen to either of us. Right. And then they're dumbfounded. Like, no, no, you, you think because you have a lack of empathy for people that look like me, actually, secretly you do. That's what you feel like, that I have a lack of empathy for white people. I've been taught my entire life to love white people. Yeah. So, and you know, everybody's been taught that in America. Even if their parents taught you to hate them in your home, everything in media, there's, so that's the thing, like even with me, uh, television, and you know, Malcolm X talks about media. Like, white people have played every character, so we believe white people can be everything. When it comes to be like the, the number one hero, yeah, white people can be that. Be a pedophile, white people can be that. Black people, people even black people be like, I don't know. 
I don't know if they should have get, I don't know if a black person could be in that role. And it's like, wow, because we've been manipulated to think that we're villains or best friends yeah. or magical Negroes that heal your urinary tract infections or <laughs> help you help you escape prison. I mean, you're right. Or teach you how to fucking golf. Like, and uh, people don't understand that. Like, like you know me on a regular base, uh, on a, like people know you on a face-to-face basis, and you can't, you say you got love for me, but you don't have love for people that look like me, but you love me. Like, and that's crazy. That's like purposeful. Because how can I say I got love for white people, but I ain't got love for, or I got a love for a white person, but I ain't got no love for any white people. That don't fucking make sense. My heart must be somewhat open to them, but you're intentionally trying to close off your heart because you don't want to believe that I'm a person or that you want to believe that I'm a person, some kind of fucking mutation that came out that's better than all the other people that look like me. And that's not the truth. That's not the simple, the simple fact is we all people and you're just an ignorant fuck. And it's just really sad. It's just really bothering, man. The thing, the thing that I was saying, like, people just, then they don't, they don't want to admit that people are treated differently. And like, and then like, because of the politics, whatever, they always mm-hmm. jump back and say, well, you know, Republicans freed the slaves. It's like, and it's okay. like, well, you can say that, but do you? Uh, you're being an idiot because you're not paying attention to history and watching the how both of these parties have changed over the last hundred years. Yeah. Like I'm gonna say, they they basically they, they almost basically split. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, not split, but flipped. Whatever. Yeah, they flipped. They and flipped. Look. And the only reason Democrat Democrats also were able to one is the the Southern Democrats slowly dying and newer Democrats pandering to black people or actually not pandering. I say at the beginning, you know what? This is how I feel. Democrat, the democratic uh, party is pretty much taking all the, I feel like they, they capitalize on the association between Martin Luther King Jr. and JFK. So they keep it like, oh, you know, like this is a party. JFK was forward thinking, and that's really when Democrats. And then, but then you like, they don't recognize that they had Lyndon B. Johnson, who was a racist, come right after him. Yeah. Like, and that's the problem also with black. Oh, I don't want to say, I don't want to get into that. But no, nah, fuck it. That's the problem with sometimes with like, I don't want to say black. Yeah, I should say black leadership because it's not collectively as black people. Is that unfortunately sometimes, maybe it is collectively. We remember the little good thing you did for too long. You get a lot of leeway for doing some a, a little bit. Yeah. So you get like, you oh, this Democratic Party, because, you know, back in the 60s, Fuck you. <laughs> and I'm not saying go with the Republican Party, but uh, there's this guy, Claude Anderson. He says, you know, black people collectively need to, well, one, focus on buying politicians like everybody else does, making business and building infrastructure, but also just have a, a com- come up with a black independent, the black independent party. So you've got to cater to us to get all our votes. And I feel like if you say, hey, we black independents, we don't have to be stuck with a party line. We can all hmm. be together and have diff- very different ideas, but collectively come together and say, hey, are you going to do this for black people? Because that's 12 percent of the population that's about to vote. Either hmm. your way or the other way. But it's a constant division. And then we got motherfuckers that think they're in a post-racial world. 
So they're gonna, oh no, I, you know, I'm just a man alone. Uh, fuck all these black people. Fuck, fuck using the, I'm black and I'm gonna use the NAACP to help do my uh, lawsuit and then I'm gonna turn and be like, I'm conservative now, which I am upset with being, can, being conservative does not make you racist or unaware of race. Because what I remember growing up, being conservative means you're fiscally conservative. Yeah. You know, it's crazy that now we wish that we had Republicans like they were in the 90s. Like, it's crazy that people wish now that Republicans were like George Bush Sr. You know, like, it's gotten so bad, it's just like, damn. It was just a bunch of white supremacists hanging out. Fuck. I'm I'm upset. I can tell. <laughs> so you just because I'm a libertarian and I'm I'm a proud libertarian too. So I've never been fully, you know, behind any Democrat, fully behind um, you know. Thing, like it, it, it never, it never was for me to, uh, for me to like you know side with one party in particular, you know. Yeah, I'm, yeah. And it's a libertarian. Well, no, you know you don't even, I wouldn't even call you that now. Why? Why not? I would just call you an independent thinker. So no, I'm a, I'm I'm a registered as. I know you're a registered libertarian, though. <laughs> So the thing is, is like I see, I see the BS in both, in both parties, you know. So, and I see, the, I see that everybody is blaming one party or another for from everything that's going on right now. If it, if it be, uh, if it be, you know, the corona, or if it be the the violence and stuff like that, and it's, it's like well, and there's just a lot of like nonsense that's that's just going on between both parties, and then people, you know, people are finally saying, oh, some people are saying, killing black people is wrong, and it's like you just now, but then the fact that people are like, eh, is it though? <laughs> Is the crazy then, thing then, to me? The, like, thing that, thing that pisses me off is that okay, like okay. Let's say for example, uh, I've never been arrested in my life. Mm-hmm. However, however, I have been handcuffed in my life. Okay, so let's go back uh-huh. to when was I handcuffed? That was a uh, seventh grade year. So, however old I was in seventh grade, I don't know. Was that ninety four? Which you are in seventh grade getting handcuffed. Think about that. Yeah. So seventh grade. So what so was that? Was that uh, was that ten, eleven? Wherever how old that is. Um, seventh grade, twelve. I got handcuffed seventh grade mm-hmm. um, for something I didn't. I didn't even do, but I was handcuffed. So if I got killed by the police, whatever. So you're going to go back to me being handcuffed way back then to say he has a violent history of hitting bus drivers. Oh, yeah, yeah. They'll do this, like, violent history. Like, I know there's a a, a picture of, like, I'm young, and I'm with my brother, my brother and my cousin. And we all have, like, all his weapons were registered weapons. And you see all these little kids with fucking AKs and and like AR 15s, but something happened to me. I bet you they find that picture somewhere and be like, look at this. Or look this at this. Suck. He's a drunk. Look at he was a thug. He routinely did drugs. It's like, okay, but wow. it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, he's just it trying to make it okay, but these things don't just, and the crazy thing is, that doesn't justify what you do with these killings, especially because. Even if these things were true and the person was white, that wouldn't justify what the police did. But you like, uh, 
You know, Rostar, what I really think is a lot of people don't want to say collectively when they talk about like civil rights and stuff, they, they want to say, I think there's the feeling underneath that basically says, you were a fucking slave before. Isn't this enough? Don't you have enough now, slave? You were a slave. So now you got almost as much rights as we do. Isn't that enough? Haven't we arrived? Slave, you should feel better because you're no longer a slave, slave. <laughs> like, I know we want to transition beyond slavery, slave, but um, if you get in trouble, guess what you're going to be, slave? A fucking slave. So it's like America has never gotten out of treating us like slaves. And in the collective unconscious of America, we're slaves. So for a lot of people, they think, well, shouldn't that black people be happy? Because we're doing a whole lot for things that used to be slaves, that used to be property. So I feel like even people that are, some people that are allies or care, or they still in their mind, because you know we don't talk about it. We don't talk about internalized white supremacy. I agree. Like, you know, and it's so hurtful to talk about, like, unconsciously feeling white stuff is better or things white people have or do is better or shit. When white people, and this is a crazy thing. I wouldn't call it white. I don't know what to call it. I'm still dealing with these, like, trying to figure out how I feel about it. But yeah, how, terms. Term, yeah, how excited we are to see white people be good at things we're already good at. Mm -hmm. And then the sad other side is it to watch white people be upset that we're good at things they're good at. They've shown to be good at. And then and then if and then if we're if we're good at something, it's always it's because of this. Yeah. It's some animalistic trait. Yeah. It's not we have a keen mind. It's natural ability. You don't have a passion for you're, you're, We're angry. We don't have passion. So is we this, have we have natural instincts. We don't have a mind cultivated for the task at hand. Like. At the same time, you make us sound magical, but as you, you're making us superhuman at the same time, you're dehumanizing, dehumanizing us. You know, it has to be some type of um, magical um, Negro. Yeah. Like, you making me into Superman, but you're constantly reminding me a nigga from Krypton. <laughs> and that you don't belong here. All right. No, and then we turn each other. And then, you know what? It's like people want to be outraged, and it's selective outrage. I know it's hard to be outraged about everything, but, like, you know, it's like people don't have time or they don't want to work on other things. Like, I posted other things about people in Yemen uh, and how the corona, you know, they've been having a, a civil war for the last six years. Mm -hmm. Six years, and then apparently the coronavirus is wiping everybody the fuck out. Like a lot of people are dying in Yemen, and it's like this is a little poor fucking country that we just bombed the hell because there's some terrorists there. I guess plotting, but mostly seem to get blown the fuck up or fighting with other people. And we're not trying to help the people there because we don't have an interest really, besides keeping people from disturbing our shit from yeah. there. And then, like, you know, even with, like, native, the Native population. I have a Native client, and, you know, Native, because, because I, mean, I mean, it's part of this population, but I'm not trying to give any kind of caveat or, like, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Native Americans are more likely to be killed by the police than anyone in the country. Yeah. Native women are two and a half times more likely to be sexually assaulted than any other woman. But we don't care about our countries, this country that, yeah, we were brought here as slaves that we love so much, we don't even care about our original people. 
So that's what tells you about this country. Like, we'll use you up and spit you out. And we'll take what we want and leave you needing and wanting more. Unless you got the night right skin. Yeah. And, and then like, if you don't, if you got the right skin, then you got to have the right friends. So even poor people are poor white people are getting deceived. It's sad. And then you just sit back and you just observe, uh, observe like people who are, like it's it's weird too, because like I'm I'm trying to say this in the right way without sounding too you know wrong. Recently, um, because like you've seen a lot of new, uh, a lot of new uh, videos of people you know being extreme. Mm-hmm. Like for example, the lady who was uh, banging on that woman's car with a with a bat. Not a bad, but like a uh, like a. Oh, the the hammer lady. The hammer lady, you have uh, you have the lady. Oh, she who got was, hemped up. Yeah, I've seen that too. But you seen you got you had the other person who was saying oh, this is not your property. You cannot write uh, Black Lives Matter on it. But that's was that's where he lived. Yeah, but like okay, but also if this is public property, it's not your property either. So. Keep it yeah. moving. Shut the fuck up. And then, like, that's just too. And then it's like, it's so much other stuff. Like, it was. It's, I don't get this. Okay, everybody's out but here, see, you know, trying to be safe, whatever. Uh-huh. You know, social distancing, whatever. Then you have people who are like, you know, saying, "Oh, I don't feel like wearing a mask, so let me cough on you." See, people are assholes. That's. That's some crazy. I've seen like a bunch of white ladies do that. And I'm like, and I saw a guy that she coughed on, this lady coughed on and died. And I'm like, well, shit, I guess maybe I should take your life right now since you're trying to take mine. Yeah. I mean, like, that's, that's like, a crime, you know? And like, you want your freedom, you want, and then, but you don't understand what I'm going through, which is a fucking mind fuck. And, you know, it's, it, like we don't the thing is America we like to they like to revise every few years even before people fucking die to remember what really happened cuz like i look at just now like so let's look at like uh, let's go like to germany right and mm-hmm. people say like you know the government was saying like okay if you know where jews are tell us if you see some jews tell us blah 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 that's something that really that happened and people, yeah, they were fucking telling the government, the Nazis, where Jews were or whatever. And that yeah. happened within a few years. Now, think about our history and think about just white people in this country being told to, hey, if you know where any black people are doing anything that you might think is something you don't like, let us know. And I feel like that comes all the way from back from when, hey, if you see any slaves that don't look like they belong around here, let us know. So, like, yeah, it's like the it's whole... Like the, it's like the picture I put up today, or yesterday, about, uh, you know, uh, you don't belong, like, what you doing in this neighborhood. It's yeah! Like, it's like, like, and, and like, because of, and because of that, I, like, I posted up, um, on the media, social media, that I've been, uh, have, have had guns put on me by the police, five times in my life. I'm probably the least threatening person that anybody can probably meet. The right. least threatening. And it's like that like the cause of violence for that, is that really necessary? Or do you feel that I'm some type of threat to you or your person, whatever, because of this and that, you know? And it's like one of the times I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't even eighteen yet. I was a child. And I was going to putt putt. That's ridiculous. Because it's like, is my humanity so alien to you that I look like an alien or something that doesn't, that you need to handle? 
Like we're looked at things like we're look we're looked at sometimes I feel like as fucking cattle or as some kind of danger like I don't want to say like fucking like we tigers or something. Hmm. Like, oh, you know, we want around, but like they gotta be handled. We gotta watch out. Like there's an inherent danger dealing with them when like you know what? When I walk around and the police drive by, by or I'm in a store and the police are there or I'm just doing something in my life and I see the police, you know what the feeling I feel like is? When I see some, when I see a stray dog that doesn't look, that looks mean and you, you'd be like, oh shit, like I hope that dog don't come over here. Like that fear, like you're going to get bit. Yeah. And that's crazy coming from the people I'm supposed to call. And the crazy thing is people don't realize like, they're like, oh, well, that don't happen. You're different. And I'm like, oh, because I tra- could be, because I've, and this is honestly how I feel. I've handicapped myself in my vo- vocal range to make other people feel better. Yeah. About me being around. Like, yeah. It's People true. don't even realize that you can't even speak in your. That like, you've destroyed your real voice, just so they can feel okay. Yeah, you're right. But I want to say like, like I I know I speak higher, purposely than my natural. That's why like I say this a lot because one I know half of it is because uh, it's easier to understand me if I speak in my high in my, and my this this voice whatever rather than using my natural deeper voice that I've, you know, purposely shut out, you know? Yeah, and now I have to try, you have to try to sound like you are supposed to actually sound, which is depressing, but continue. Yeah, and it's like, and people don't know that. And then when, and then when they hear my, my, like when I just don't care and they hear my natural voice, it's like, wait a minute, what, like, are you I'm like, no, nah, that's, that's how I really sound. <laughs> that's how I really sound when I, when I'm not trying to pander. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's because, like, like, it's only I'm when I talk like this is like, oh no, what is, what is his voice? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't match. It doesn't match how you, uh, your general how you attitude. And they're like, man, it hurts. And it's like you know, it's like don't get me don't get me wrong. Like when I, I tell them, like yeah, I was when I was in choir, when I was in choir, like when I was singing, whatever, I used my natural voice, and it just maybe people like look look at me weird because it's not deeper than everything else. But you know, it's like it is so bad that you know we are we we have grown accustomed as minorities to fear the police instead of you know respect what they do. And yeah. that is the main issue that we all we keep facing. It's like, why should I fear for my life? Why should I be scared that I'm going to die if I interact with you? That should if never. If I be. even if I call you, I've had I've I I've, I've been more scared of police than I have been of gangs, and that's crazy. Yeah, that shouldn't be like that. I, have, I I'm more scared that you know. I'm gonna go outside and get shot by someone in a blue uniform than I am that someone from Al Qaeda is gonna kill me. You know? Because the chances are it's a higher chance that somebody in a blue uniform is gonna kill you. And yeah, you're right. I've been like, okay, there could be eight dudes looking real suspect. I'll walk down the street through them. It could be three police officers. I'll cross the street or go on the next block and walk. And that's and that and that's because it's been crazy. like because it's two times like it's crazy, you know. We talk about this, but like it's three times the police came up at us incorrect, and the times we've been to, been been like lived together or been in each other. The first time when we saved Tony's life at the apartment, you know, oh, at the house. That's that's, in that's, that's like and I don't want to say everybody like. I've only like of the five times that I've had guns pulled 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 on me, that was one of the two times that I've actually actually feared that I was going to die. 
just mainly because I made that awkward that that awkward jump back because I yeah, opened the front the open the front open the door and they had the fucking fucking guns drawn already. Yeah, and it's like and it's like I jumped back and I hit the uh, we had like a uh, people listening we had like a little wall thingy that was blocked as like by the door so it blocked it blocked me when I hit it because like I jumped back my hands up like hey he's he's in there whatever what's like we already told you he was subdued. Yeah, so you got your guns cocked, whatever, and then and then they put us on the street, and then just as soon we were having a gay orgy in the house, and it's yeah, like, yeah, and then checking and like, oh, oh, we don't know what they got on them. We checking to see what we got on them. We just fucking saved the guy's life. You looked in the back, blood fucking everywhere. The dude was fucking naked when you came in here, fucked up with a gash in his head, and and you're like, oh, let's see what these other people are doing, and then we got fucking. The ultimate fucking, well, not nah. what's her, what was her name? Barb. Barb, because I have a friend named Karen, and she's actually Asian, and she's been having a tough time with this Karen shit. So we're gonna use real name or fucking names. Barb acted like she, Raw Star lived there for what? Damn near a year and a half, two years at that point. A year, year and a half. A year and a half. She said she didn't really know him. Like, think of that. She was not going to call the police to save her landlord, who is Filipino, because she had to go to a fucking race. A fucking race. And this is the problem. Like, you think we want to keep caring about your feel? like people keep caring about your feelings, but you show that you don't care about our lives. Second time, we're trying to get some shit at AutoZone. We're trying to get a uh, 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 what was that? It was a, a battery. Yeah, we're trying to get a battery at AutoZone. That AutoZone is closed in Burbank. We in front of Southern Eleven, right next to it. The police stop me and say, "I just matched the description of the person who robbed Seven Eleven the night before." Now, what kind of dumb shit is that? I really think they just wanted to run our names and numbers and stuff. Because the other guy came back, he's like, no, that's not the guy. And then they told me. They wouldn't tell me where the next auto zone was. Then they told me. Third time, our roommate, his mother dies. He's wailing, crying. The police bust in there like, what the fuck is going on? And then I'm like, his mom just died. Luckily, one of the, the police officers like, I don't know. He totally, but the thing is, these weren't white police officers this third time. He was like, oh, I'm sorry, and left. That's That was cool, but like, that's the thing. Like, people aren't, people aren't willing to check on, on us or with us to see if what, we're going through is our own traumatic experience or things like that. They just, it's just like, Oh, they got to be up to some criminal shit, which is like, motherfucker, do you realize that the fact that you look at us, most of us doing for criminal shit, that's why most of us really, a lot of us don't do criminal shit. Yeah. I'm one. I don't want to do crime. And two, I'm too motherfucking paranoid because one, you look at me like I'm already a criminal. Shit. I take care of myself. Like, health is wealth. People are more likely to try to kill me because I'm healthy. Think about that. Yeah, because you look like, like you look I like look, you I look like I could be dangerous. Shit. Like, I'll start this whole shit. And this shit with the industry, like, and yeah, that's what uh, like I like because there was something out there really quick. Um, I'm not gonna say who was supposed to have one because um, I don't know what happened and I don't want to put them on blast because I really want them to come on. But uh, with the whole industry stuff, it's ridiculous. So it's like last week I was on a, a town hall, and basically we were talking about um, things that need to be changed in the industry. And I want to say it was about 32 people on the call. And I was invited by um, 
two people actually. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to everybody's concerns or what what need to be changed and uh, what's going on and you know some of the behind the scenes stuff and um, you know there was this one thing that I brought up and I'm like you know what pisses me off a lot and I was the one who brought it up because it wasn't brought up yet like the title like the the titles of some of these films it's like uh like uh like ghetto ghetto nappy headed black b i t c h bang by white, white man yeah yeah by white cop yeah it's like wait what and it's like you know don't get me wrong don't get me wrong like always always and i and i i've said this uh i said it there and i said it i'll say it now and like i said it online too i have no issue with uh when you're selling the video you were saying yes this is interracial Mm -hmm. that's what it is but i have the issue when you do it on the uh, production side on distribution side i don't mind but on production side i do because just because that that uh that vagina is is a, a black person and this vagina is a white person, they shouldn't be paid differently. The only time I see you should be paid differently is for how long, like if you're a veteran versus someone who's brand new. Your name, Ben. And, and there are probably certain scenes that don't have to do with race. Like no, I mean, no, I mean, I mean, like, because, like, because no, most I'm things, just saying, like, I feel like the difference between pay should be like, well, shit, blow shop scene, anal scene, DP scene, but oh, yeah. the race of the participants shouldn't matter. I agree with you. I'm just throwing that in there. Like, I mean, yeah, but that's, that's, no, no, that's my Like, if it's the same, same thing, it shouldn't, um, shouldn't matter. And the thing is, and the thing is, it's like, because, like, you know, if it's the same, it's, it's like, for example, I love, like, one of my real homies, um, Missy Stone. Missy Stone has her base rate. Okay. She should not get paid the same amount as someone who just started two, uh, three weeks ago. Yeah, just because the girl's like a blonde white girl. Yeah, and the thing is, like, if you look at the majority uh, when they were doing, they were throwing out a lot of these parodies of uh, of all this stuff, like mm-hmm. the Cosby Show parody and all these other parodies. You seen Misty just sitting there, just chilling. You know, she was in the in all of them whatever and like that's and she, and like if you look at if you want to think about current active black porn performers you will see that she she's, she's definitely in the top five yeah. of black porn performers and like if the top if one of the top five is getting like and sometimes and sometimes getting paid the same amount as someone who just started and that's then bullshit. her and then her rate can go up to be to me in like thirty percent more than her rate, that's an issue. That's an issue. You know, she's still a woman. She's she still uh she still does a fantastic job doing what she does, whatever. But it shouldn't it shouldn't be a difference in what they want to pay them. And, and then you treat her like she's not the draw. Like yeah, okay, people like new faces, but she's the draw. That's mm-hmm. Probably the person that's bringing you like, oh shit, Missy Stone. Okay, I like this white girl in here, but from a fan point of view, it's not the really white girl that's getting you know on the same set that's putting them into the scene or to the video. It's her, and that's crazy that they think they they should pay them the same. And then like they're like, I, and I understand like because people keep saying like, why don't black people have their own companies? Well, they did. They did, but DVD. I mean, internet killed the DVD it, 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 star. Internet, internet killed um, black porn, and um, it kept getting worse and worse until some of like. I mean, you still got freak mob and um, stuff like that, but you know. I feel like you got a lot of uh, on the East Coast. Yeah. Black porn, and then, they, but they already have a bad reputation on the East Coast. So then it becomes a thing like, oh yeah, there's a couple on the East Coast. But the East Coast has got a bad rep for some people. For well, and, and, and for even, some and reason, and, even, and, then, and even, even the ones that cater to uh, black people are more so owned by by white people. 
Yeah. You know, like black. They on some can to curl shit. Don't get me wrong, because I know, and I know black has, uh, and I don't want to say, I don't wanna, I just know that they hire, have hired a lot of, uh, and have contracted uh, black black performers. You know, and don't be a black but, male performer either. It's even worse. But I mean, because like, wow, like, you know, well, one, I've been seeing the people, different companies, like reactions to the things that have happened and they were too fucking slow moving. And then it's just like, wow, like you're really unsaid, like, you know, one, I have to say moving to California, I've never experienced more racism in my life till I moved to California honestly, yeah. like open racism. And, uh, but also like, you're not acknowledging that you're like making money off of like somebody's either power fantasy or humiliation. Some people just like what they like, but the black series to me is very much like a cuckold ser- series without a cuckold <laughs> being there. Like, it's some black fetish shit. Like, black dick fetish shit. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, oh, I don't know. I, mean, I don't... Do you will I get issue? in trouble? I don't do, really... Do you, I just have, don't... Do I have, have a, a trouble. Do you have an issue with the term BBC? I... I don't initially, but when you think about it, when I have to think about it, when I think about it, and I'm just like, it says so much. Instead of being just a descriptor, it says so much about a scene, the dynamic, and you know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God, I love this black hawk. And it's like, okay, we all know it's black. Like, we can see that. That's partly why we're here for, because maybe we want to see this interracial thing because that's what I'm in like certain people I'm not but that's what certain people are in their relationships and Mm -hmm. they want to see that reflected in their porno but not this kind of like ah like you know basically the reverse of white boy stomp you remember that where they all Mm -hmm. used to wear confederate flag shirts and uh fucking blow bang black girls I know what you're talking about, but I've never seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I mean, if ooh, it's a good thing that p- porn o- only is selective about how they cancel people. Yeah. So but, I know, um, so I know everybody, um, some people posted up after all this stuff went down and they were talking about, they were canceling or they were trying to, you know, get people who are active, you know, who are racist not to be able to shoot anymore and a few people have said like you can get canceled faster if you pour water on a dog than if you are a racist or you rape somebody in the industry boom boom i was just thinking about the other day i was like damn they're about to can they're about to people were like fuck this nigga fuck him fuck this black guy i can't believe he poured water on a blind dog so this guy raped raped a couple girls Drunk a couple girls, he's okay. He's actually shooting with like big companies. Wow, wow. And I'm and I'm, I'm not gonna say no names, but I'm not I, saying I'm not I saying shared, that, like what I he shared. did was bad. I wasn't saying what he did was I- excusable, but like, look at how you treat your performers when they're different colors. So like, so I'm not gonna say no names, but like, it was someone who I spoke to who I shared the names with, whatever. And um, one person in particular, like I've heard things about this person for years, not not just not just recently, but for mm-hmm. years. Like I want to say, for at least the last three years, I've heard more stuff about this person in particular, and they were saying the one stuff about him was lies, whatever. But he was the main. He's been the main person over the last few years that I've heard the most stuff about. Like, here's, it's at a point now that if I hear anything about this person, I believe it because 
it's been a, and it's just not one performer. It is plethora of performers, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, that's the crazy thing with this carnival rage industry is that you can have a straight up sexual predator just fucking up new people and sending them out and just being like, okay, like, you know, like, I'm sure I'm, I could, I can imagine that probably for some of the people that work with them, that might have been their final scene or the thing that made them be like, or their interaction with them decided that like, oh, this industry is not for me. And I don't think people realize that, like. I agree. This is a industry where like, that should be, I, you know, there's all kinds of fantasies. And you know, if you have a fantasy and you're pitching a certain fantasy, okay. Be clear about it. But this shouldn't be an industry where this is happening. I agree. Like, that tells you just how much that's a fucked up power and 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 just fucked upness to like to do that. Like I mean, well, shit. I guess if you're not a rapist, you don't understand. You won't understand. I'm like, how do you do these things? Or how are you going to try to take some pussy when pussy is a job? Exactly. And it's like... <sighs> and that's when it goes into, you know, rape is more than sex. It's about power and, like, you know, just fucked upness, really. And it's like we would we will fail to realize that in many ways there's a lot of people who are who consent to do the same whatever and mm-hmm. because they get uncomfortable because of certain things mm-hmm. like and they can't say anything about it because of someone's status. It's like I'm I can't think of who it is right now, but like someone was talking about someone came in somebody. Mm-hmm. Whatever. And that's oh not- yeah, I heard about that force, like force cream pies, and they wouldn't let me go. And I'm like, but that's not even what the scene called for. Yeah. So I'll be pissed as a person because, making like, the porn. Don't don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Um, many many of these girls are on the pill. Whatever. No, and, but it's just not. Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying, like many girls on the pill, whatever. So you got that, and you have many dudes who are already clipped. But the thing mm-hmm. is, you know, you never know, whatever. And some girls just don't don't want anybody to come at them, period. And, like, you can mess around and get pregnant that way, you know? Yeah, but, yeah, you can. But you're working together. This is the scene. You're not, not doing – this is a job. You're not doing your fucking job. Yeah. And, yes, it's acting. So there's some cre- creativity, le- creative leeway. But if you're supposed to shoot on their face – you need to be shooting on her fucking face. If she said, don't come at me, don't fucking come at her. If she said, don't blow my pussy out, don't blow her fucking pussy out. Like, I don't understand what the problem is. What? Well, because I'm not a fucking creep. Yeah. But, CW, we didn't hit our time. Um... So everybody, it's been a very angry hour. Angry, the angry hour. No, uh, the uh, angry effects. The anger effects. <laughs> I was just gonna call it Black Lives Matter, but I can call it that. Um, everybody, please make sure you check out uh all of my all of, all of our social medias. Um, we are trying to get you some more. Interesting guests coming up. I really wish the person who we were supposed to have today was available. I don't know what happened, and I don't want to speculate. So there's that. But um, CW, go ahead and t- tell your social media really quick. Oh, all right. So personal is, and this is where I'm posting most of like all my, you know, Black Lives Matter and different protest stuff or just engaging in really discussions about race and stuff. And I'm actually pretty open to it. So, uh, you're, you know, I'm, I'm committed to, to fixing ignorance, 
but not, but not, uh, but I don't want to engage with a fucking racist. Anyway, uh, personal is Christopher underscore Willie with an I E, not an Y underscore J. Uh, every all the gym stuff is CC Fitness LA at Instagram, CC Fitness LA on Twitter, and uh, CC Fitness LA dot com. Uh, this is our website and CC Fitness on Facebook. But who's using Facebook right now? Anyway, um, Burbank, we're uh, the Burbank Misfits on Instagram, Burbank Misfits on Twitter, BurbankMisfits.com is our website. I'm um, Raw Star, R A W S C A R R, on um, majority of everything. Um, thank you for tuning in to the Misfit Effect, um, and we'll check you out next week. Be well, stay amazing. <laughs>